loafers. We had two feet of snow when you came to work in loafers. So that yeah, was, yeah. That's yeah. commitment. <laughs> Frothing at the mouth, he'd come to the bench. Hey guys, I, 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 I held it together. Did I hold it together? You did good. You did good. You know. <laughs> it is the wine stuff and wine podcast. Yes. It it's where uh, in Niagara we we enjoy some Niagara wine. We talk about it. Maybe you got a story about this. Uh, this wine that you brought for us today. <laughs> I was like, did my son get a summer job that I didn't know about? And then Perry shows up, loafers on, yeah. the three-piece suit, and he's like, here's the journal. And here's I'm like, a, here's the I journal. felt like a jerk. I should get him something. <laughs> so can you, if you had two glasses, would you actually be able to tell the difference? And, and without an exaggeration, for sure. Yeah. And I could tell the difference between a liter and a half bottle that sold for twelve ninety-five. Yeah. And uh, and and a thirty-two dollar bottle of wine. That's your wine glass. I can tell because of the big greasy prints. And I'm like, I don't like. <laughs> and, and pull it off. I committed to the same, very similar for January. I did the wet January. So we're drinking more. <laughs> drinking more this month. So, uh, you know what? Uh, seating capacity is 100. What kind of jerk is not going to buy a seat to help charity? What, you don't yeah. like charity? Just I like, love like, Exactly, right? I love like, charity. No so, yes, everyone struggles. You got to get to work. And, <laughs> and, and I raised $385, but then I decided that I could do better and that, that $10,000 would be a good goal and that $20,000 would be a good goal and that maybe $100,000 would be a good goal. That's of course fluctuated, but but uh, one that never has is that I realized that this in part saved my life. The Terry Fox Foundation saved my life. And then the second part of that is you've never seen a more generous and giving community as, as you will in Niagara. So. And one of the things that like really gets me through the days is especially those tough days as you come home and you got like, kids that, that bring it out of you, right? Like it's... Oh, 100%. It's like, you say like... From a friend's standpoint, yeah, yeah. you put yourself out there. And when I see your son, it's like you're not using him as a tool to sell houses. You're just like, this is what me and the boy are doing today. And he's like, these eggs are good. <laughs> and like, I love that. I love that because yeah. kids, the kids don't know yeah. anything else but to be honest. I yeah. love it. Niagara Sports Bar, Niagara's Finest Tie. I'm trying to think of every place that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's uh, White Oaks. Um, yeah. We... Uh, uh, we'll take any one of those, however the night's going to go, if yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, we were at my parents' house the other day, and my dad, he's, he's diabetic. He's always cold, so he has the door shut, the heat set at like 88, and the fire going. And my poor mom is like wearing a t-shirt, oh my god, it's so hot in here. What it always goes into is that Paul Harbor and their family are true pillars of the community. 100%. And that's a big reason why they bring the wine. Uh, and this is the third time we've- That's we've all right. It. Welcome to the Wine and Wine Stuff podcast. This has been a little <laughs> while. I got to get get, yes. get back into the introduction and get back into the mode here. Uh, I'm your host, Andrew Perry, and my host, Evan McDonald and Jesse McDonald are on the other side of the table. And today, we've- Are you guys ready for this? Big deal. Are you ready for this? This is a big deal. Big this deal. is <laughs> Joe Bilateri. Yes, yes. How? Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's nice to be here. Do you I need was, a new MC? I was concerned. Actually, that? you would Can be I a good MC, that? Andrew Perry, because everyone knows you. They know you all over the world now. Yeah. And I also, my big, the biggest stress I had was I always see how well dressed you guys are. And I felt like I have a Carhartt t shirt on today. I was like, should I go buy a suit? Like, should I go to the outlet mall, buy an ill fitting suit, and just wear it in here? But you guys were like, all right, you know what? Pilateri's coming, let's wear a t shirt. Andrew Perry, that's low key for you. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's, uh, that's, well, you know what? Since COVID, that's it, like a gardening outfit for you. <laughs> yeah. Since COVID, I just transitioned into the, the cash blazer and nice. the, in the jeans. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, who am I trying to impress anymore? But you people? still wear loafers. We had two feet of snow when you came to work in loafers. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. commitment. I also <laughs> work that's commitment to a look. Yeah, yeah. I also work out He's my garage there. with slippers. I've seen you. You're like Rocky yeah. in there. <laughs> I feel like I don't know what you should be doing with this. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a it's an over. I'm good, Sam. It's an overwhelming for Sam yeah. Yelly back there at the camera. Yeah, he, he's he's a good great producer. He's uh, you know gonna come in with all the hot tips for you from behind the camera. So if you see him going like this, it means. Uh, Stop talking with, about whatever you're talking about. I coached him joking. for two years <laughs> in hockey. You've never met a more unseemingly bad-tempered person <laughs> than Sam Miele. Honestly, there would be times when he would be like frothing at the mouth. He'd come to the bench and say, hey guys, I saw you. And I'd say, Sam, just take it easy. Hold it together, buddy. Hold it together. And he'd get back out there. Someone would high-stick him. 
And he, you could hear him swearing in Italian out there. <laughs> then he would come to the bench. It'd be like, yo, I held it together. Did I hold it together? You did good. You did good. You know? So, yeah. That's That's the director. Let's get a camera I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sidetrack us. What are we? Actually, yeah. Stacy's the director. Yeah, Stacy yeah, Mulholland. Stacey She's Mulholland. a great person. Stacy Mulholland's well. one of my hey, favorite Stacey people in the world. This. Yeah. That's well, amazing. It is the Wine Stuff and Wine Podcast. It yes. Is, it's where uh, mm-hmm. in Niagara we, we enjoy some Niagara wine. We talk about it. Maybe mm-hmm. you got a story about this. Uh, this wine that you brought for us today. Uh, so let's let's pour some wine. Let's talk sure. about it, and then we'll talk about some stuff. So are you guys pouring? Is that what's happening here? Typically, the host does it. Yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, or the guest. Okay, uh, yeah, the guest. I'll get the guest here. All right, I'll pour uh, for Jesse first, because that's the, the way they teach first. you how to do it in yep. the nice restaurants, and then curl the glass. Very oh, nice. That. Thank yeah. you. Did it my, I did. It was very, I was like, very nice. Usually, I and I'm going to say this um, humbly, Usually, as a guy who's 48, I've spent as much time in a gym as anyone in a room. But then Evan shows up here, and I'm like, look at those biceps. That's amazing. That's amazing. And then... It's going to make me blush. Yeah. It's, uh, this is good. So, I'm, so what I'm pouring is a 2019 Cab Franc mm-hmm. nice. from my good friend. Uh, my good friend's the Harbor family at Ravine. I'm actually doing dry January right now, so I'm going to be doing a... A, uh, a aromatic, yeah, aromatic. Okay. On no this. problem. We can spit it out. You want to get a, yeah, yeah. Get a spitter? Oh no, I'm I'm good. I'll just I'll sniff. But uh, so here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing uh, with uh, Cab Franc. I could have chosen any number of wineries. Uh, here's why I chose Cab Franc. I am in the wine business. I sell vineyard equipment. Uh, when uh, when anyone in the world asks us, okay, Niagara wines, tell me about them. What do they do really well? Across the board, Cab Franc. Uh, and I've heard different people say different things about different wines. Yep. Uh, for a white Chardonnay in Ontario, you can't go wrong. For a red, Cab Franc is really the best grape we grow. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's the one that we can, we can ripen most consistently, and it's the one that we can bring the breast. The, the bre- oh, bring the, the breast. Uh, right. the, uh, Let's do it. The best expression <laughs> of our terroir out yeah. in Cab Franc. It's, uh, it's a great wine. I chose Ravine uh, because... I could have chosen Vineland Estates. I could have chosen Pilateria Estates. I could have chosen Riverview. These are companies that uh, support the community yes. in yes. ways that people yes. will yes. never know. So Ravine, for instance, uh, we've done two shows for the Terry Fox Foundation at Ravine for the past two years. Well, four. We did two each year. Um, and uh, we've helped raise uh, $80,000 because they gave us their space. Yes. They gave us their people. They gave us their food. Uh, so it's it's as much a celebration about the heart of the people behind the wine as it is the wine. But the wine is incredible on its Absolutely. own. Absolutely. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it's a good introduction. Yeah. 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 Well, Sorry. actually, hey. Stacey, this was the bottle that you got for Christmas for me. I loved it. We took it home that night. Thank you very much. And uh, we had it over dinner. Yeah, so let's get in there. And actually, you gave me the, one of these bottles, too. Yeah, because you brought me a journal. A, I, a I, so journal. I commented uh, on a day planner yeah. that you had online, and the guy brings it over. I'm okay. like, who is driving this brand new Mercedes? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did my son get a summer job that I didn't know about? And then Perry shows up, loafers on, yeah. with a three-piece suit, and he's like, here's the journal. And here's I'm like, a, here's a gold I felt like a jerk. I, I should get him something. Is, <laughs> so that's, that's pretty incredible. No, so... Cab Franc is uh, is is typically a more cold, hardy variety for us. So it means that in weather like we've been having, minus 18, minus 19, minus 20, there's a, a, a decreased danger that we're going to lose the vine or that the buds that are embedded in the vine are going to die. So they, when you hear wind machines running in Niagara, uh, at this time of the year, that's what they're for, is to try and protect the buds and protect the vine. Uh, Cab Franc is typically a cold, hardy variety, um, but it does it does require a few more ripening days. So to get it ripe, we uh, we we ha- we need a few more days of heat heat units in the summer, and we can usually do it in Ontario really well. Uh, 2019 would have been an awesome year, and I'm looking forward to dry January being over. But I can't yeah, like, yeah. commit to something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't. You're so close. But I'm like, uh, <laughs> also, how monumental would it be if I stopped right now? They're like, there's yeah. a guy. He is not even worth the paper he's written. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, uh, man, so I'm trying to, um, what are you guys getting out of this? It's delicious. Mm. It's good uh, definitely getting some franc. <laughs> getting some franc, that's good. <laughs> it is cap franc. Yeah. So cherry is always something uh, that, yeah. that, that, that sort of comes out of here. So if, if you've spent any time in Napa, and I think you guys have, 
We've been just about everywhere. Yeah. So if if you compare this to like a Napa Cab Franc, Mm -hmm. it is totally different. If you had something from Jaylor or uh, or uh, Kendall Estates or uh, whatever, uh, peak ripeness when they when they harvest that fruit would be twenty six to twenty eight bricks. So that's a sugar scale that we use to say how sweet is the grape going to be, which translate to translates to how's the wine going to taste. And and that's so, the thing that you yeah look exactly the, the refractometer yes. exactly yes. so it, it gives you using light it tells you how much sugar is in the grapes that okay. you're harvesting in ontario uh, we'd be looking like more like 22 to 24 so a lot less residual sugar to form the taste of the wine than would normally expect out of california but it does mean that a ca- bottle of cabernet franc from ontario stands right beside a bottle of cabernet franc from california and is good for all of its own reasons. That's yeah. why mm. uh, if uh, we, we, it's hard for me to drink what people would call a great California red now because I'm so, uh, I'm so in love with the taste right. of, of Ontario reds. Nice. So can you, sense. if you had two glasses, would you actually be able to tell the difference? And, and without an exaggeration, for sure. Yeah. And I could tell the difference between a liter and a half bottle that sold for twelve ninety five. Yeah. And, uh, and, and a $32 bottle of wine. Um, the great benefit for, and the reason I do dry January, Jesse, <laughs> is that is that I have probably had more opportunities to taste great wine as part of my job, not yeah. as not as yeah. something you do. Like my wife said to me, the first time I did a, a sober stretch of four months because I was like, I'm just drinking too much, yeah. too much wine, and my and my wife came with me for kind of a bring your wife to work day. Like she was like, yeah. oh, I'll just come with you. I'll go visit customers. And she said, are they just offering you wine because I'm here? I was like, no, this is the deal. Like, it's harvest. <laughs> There's a harvest lunch happening. They bring two or three bottles of wine out. Uh, it's the end of the day. Yep. There's craft beer there. There's So as, as part of what I do yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in not just Ontario, but we travel all over, all over the States as well, people just want to celebrate their wine when you're there. Yeah, they, yeah. Want, they, they know that you're, you're in the wine business. You've tried a bunch of wines, and they're like, why don't you try, try this? It. Take just take it. I'm like it's yeah. ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. ten o'clock in the morning. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's you know what? It's really impressive to commit to something like that. Yeah. And 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 pull it off. I committed to the same, very similar for January. I did the wet January, so we're I'm drinking more, <laughs> I'm drinking more this month. So uh, you know what? Let's work it out. I'm just doing and this January, and it's, and it's just trying to get through. <laughs> January. Yeah. It's it's not easy either. Right? Don't die in January. It's, That's it's, the key. It's yeah. not easy. You know, yeah. you commit to something and you got to follow through. So I I appreciate that. Thank you. So, yeah, the, so I'll uh, drink yours after. Yeah, absolutely. This is <laughs> untouched. You can always, my wife always says, like, if we're at a party, she's like, that's your wine glass. I can tell because of the big greasy prints. And I'm like, I don't, like, I'm not 12. Like. <laughs> so I think it would be, you know, I, I think we really regret if we didn't bring you on and ask you a couple of questions about comedy. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So walk us through, uh, you've always been, you know, you were John Deere before and then you have yeah. your own company and all this other stuff, you know, involving wine and farms, but where did, uh, you know, becoming a comedian fall into all of that? So I, uh, I was, uh, maybe always a class clown and, <laughs> and then, uh, I would like, uh, would like to be the center of attention in most rooms and, and middle child, like you're a peacemaker, <laughs> right? Like you're trying to uh, mitigate arguments between your parents and your teenage sisters, and and just everything that goes on at a house. But I, I did I I entered an open mic night once uh, early in my married life. So we've been married 23 years now, and I, I don't even remember when that was. It might have been like 99 or 2000. Oh wow! And they give you you know five minutes on stage at Yuck Yucks in the Falls. Yeah, and. Uh, and five minutes seemed like an eternity to write for. Like, it seemed like that was going to be a long time. But I, I went up there, and, and open mic nights are the worst. It's like, it's like when the, the real estate market is slow and you have your friends and family come to open houses, I can imagine. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what an open mic night is. Like, yeah. you invite 10 people, like, just, just buy a bunch of beer and then laugh at the jokes. So there's maybe like 50 people there, but I did get some solid laughs. I got, I got some, some jokes that I've been telling for a while. They got a solid laugh. And then yeah. I, uh, uh, I had a good yeah. friend of ours who was a judge, and I used to sort of say, like, I love comedy, but I don't know if I want to do it for a living. And, and he reminded me, you don't have to. You can do something you love as part of your life and do yeah. it as much as you want. So I, st- I had the idea uh, for the Red Roof Retreat. I said, I'll do a comedy show for them at my 
Cousins Winery, Pilateria Estates, uh, seating capacity is 100. What kind of jerk is not going to buy a seat to help charity? What, you don't yeah. like charity? Just I like, love charity. Exactly, <laughs> right? I love like, charity. No choice. So yeah. we, we, we got mm-hmm. 110 seats, uh, and through Friends of Friends, it's, I realized it wasn't hard to sell out 110 seats, but um, this is a longer story, but we have time, I yeah, think. Well, yeah, um, apparently. Then I realized <laughs> I didn't have an act. Like, I, I, had, uh, I didn't really have like a 40 minute set that I could do just so five minutes of jokes, five, five minutes five. of jokes was going to happen. Like people were not, if I could just repeat the same five minutes of jokes eight times, I would have been fine. But I had my favorite teacher in the world. Biggest influence in my, in my academic life was Miss Volante. I went to Dennis Morris high school in St. Catharines and Miss Volante was my drama teacher. She was a great woman. And I reached out to her and I said, Maria, I have committed to this show in 2001. It's sold out. There's two months left. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. And she said, write down your stuff and come in and see me on a Saturday. So she was training her kids for the Sears Drama Festival on a Saturday. So she had probably 30 or 40 students with her. And she made me perform (laughs) in front of these kids for three Saturdays in a row. And she said, Joey, uh, like a 15-year-old kid who's sober is not going to fake laugh for you. So (laughs) if it's not funny, they're not going to laugh. And over that, that next three weeks, one month, we, we sort of, we got the timing and flow of an act for what has yeah. become the same exercise I've used in whatever many shows I've done since then. That's and, awesome. And, yeah. And, yeah. and she was so great. So when that, it's, a, it's the softest spot I could have for any profession as a teacher because this woman single-handedly changed the course of my life. I say we every time I talk about it, but we've raised yeah. $500,000 for charity because Miss Volante took the time with her students every Saturday with me to say, this is, this is what your act should look like. That is really funny. That's not funny. Don't do that. You're being, yeah. you're yeah. punching down. You're being mean. Don't right. do that. Like punch up and be positive. And, and that's sort of the, the way my gig has gone. So yeah, long answer to yeah. a short question, but that's my deal. So, yeah. so well, because that was kind of my second question was how did you involve um, yourself in, in obviously such a huge heart uh, with charities, local charities, uh, Terry Fox, um, but b- basically it was right from the beginning how you married the two. That was yeah, your it's, second show. My, my mom is from Scotland, and, and she used to, like, chant this thing to all of her kids. <laughs> and any child who would listen, really, is that uh, she would always say, well, God gave every one of you a gift, and your only job in this world is to learn how to use it for good. So that was, that was my mom's thing that she said. And so we were always, like, you always felt like kind of a failure if if – you weren't doing that. Like, not, not that she meant us feel that way, but right. just you would think, like, what am I actually doing with this talent that, that I supposedly have? Uh, so um, I, I, I just decided I would do as... I, I do private gigs. I do corporate gigs. Uh, but I, I, got, I sort of cut my teeth on doing charity gigs uh, because it was a great way for me to sort of get this out of my system and, and raise money for good causes. It's great. So how much money have you raised? Like, I would say uh, I stopped keeping track because I, I, I realized that there <laughs> so was what? something slightly narcissistic about keeping track <laughs> of, of the dollar figure. But uh, it's north of, we've raised for the Terry Fox Foundation alone, Team Pilsy. Our team has raised um, uh, like $320,000, nice. $330,000. For charities in general, it's higher. Yeah, so it's, see, Stacy knows better than <laughs> I do. But I, it's over a half million dollars for whatever we've done. Awesome. The Terry Fox Foundation is huge to me because it was it was such an important part of my life. I had sort of a mental breakdown in 2008. None of you guys were in real estate in 2008, but no. I'm sure you've heard war stories. Uh, I just bought a business. Uh, I I was in over my head. Things had gone great in 2007 to the point where I doubled down on how good 2008 was going to be. I ordered inventory. I doubled our line of credit at the bank. Like, I feel like an idiot now. (laughs) saying. And then uh, uh, nothing, the economy stopped. Nothing was selling. And I used to just go into my office and cry every day. Like, I honestly had a complete breakdown. Um, I Like, every day, my dad would call me, go, Joe, what's wrong? I didn't see your truck at work. And I'd say, "I, I don't know, Dad. I'm struggling. Uh, yes, everyone struggles. You got to get to work. And, <laughs> uh, and he would every day call me and ask what I was doing. My wife, I, I had three things that helped me through it. Um, one was love. My, my wife of 23 years, Rebecca, 
she would tell our kids to tell me that they loved me every day. She would tell them every day. And I knew this because they would come up to me like in a lineup. <laughs> they would cut like Ariel, my oldest, would go like, like walk up to me like, I love you, daddy. And like, like hug. And Olivia, uh, I love you, daddy. Hug Johnny, like who's always just been my buddy. I love you, daddy. Like hug. <laughs> and then Juliet, the youngest, who was three at the time, would come up to me and go like, Daddy, uh, daddy, mommy said to say that we love you. So, <laughs> so I had my, my family telling me they love me no matter what. I had my dad telling me that I had to, I had to get to work every day, that I had to, I had to take action so that, um, that, you know, when, when as a, as realtors, you have to make stuff happen. You, you, yeah. you know, you have to run a little bit faster than the person beside you. But my dad reminded me every day that, that the fear wouldn't get me, that not doing the work is what would get me, that, that the fear couldn't hurt me that not getting up every day and doing the work is what would get me. And then my daughter happened to be doing a heritage fair project for the Terry Fox Foundation at the time. And uh, I, I would say she was doing it, but I was basically doing it for her, like <laughs> you do, oh, yeah. like yeah, with your course. kids. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I was reading, uh, and of course everyone knows about Terry Fox, but I was reading this book, and for whatever reason, the mood I was in, the way I was feeling, the words were like going through me. I couldn't believe that here was this guy who who was in a children's ward and hearing the cries of kids who were five years old who weren't crying because they had cancer. They were crying because their parents had to go home at the end of the day, that they couldn't stay there with them the whole night. And, and reading that he said, uh, because he'd read an article about an amputee who was running marathons, he was going to run across the country. Uh, and, and I was thinking like, immediately, immediately I had perspective. All of a sudden, I was like, okay, if it all goes to hell, what, and I've done everything I can, what really is is the sad thing here? There's no, mm -hmm. this guy had real problems and woke up and decided he was going to do something about it. So I decided I want, I raised, I don't want to brag, <laughs> everyone stay seated. I raised $385 in 2008 for the Terry Fox Foundation. <laughs> Jesse, it's okay. Just stay right there. <laughs> I raised three hundred eighty-five dollars, but then I decided that I could do better, and that that ten thousand dollars would be a good goal, and that twenty thousand dollars would be a good goal, mm. and that maybe a hundred thousand dollars would be a good goal. That's of course fluctuated, but but uh, one that never has is that I realized that this, in part, saved my life. The Terry Fox Foundation saved my life, mm. and then the second part of that is you've never seen a more generous and giving community mm -hmm. as, as you will in Niagara. So it, it, you've, uh, I've met people that moved here six months ago and I've met people who have lived their whole lives here, but as part of this community, they want to be part of giving as much as they can. Yeah. I'm talking too much. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's that's like, perfect. I feel that's like the, that's the goal. Okay. Yeah. okay. okay. Yeah. I'm Absolutely. sorry. We're just listening. Yeah. No, that's a great story though. And Incredible. Like, obviously we love hearing stuff like that. It's funny because in like, Obviously, like real estate is kind of something that just naturally happened for us in like our business of flipping houses, building custom homes, uh, doing even like commercial development. Like we do a completely different thing than just buying and yeah. real estate and it just naturally evolved into that. Um, but it's a stressful business too. Mm -hmm. And so we, we do the same thing. And it's funny that you say how your kids get you through it because like I, I have tough days all the time and, and days where you're like, oh man, like it just wears on you and there's a lot of money out all the time. And one of the things that like really gets me through the days is especially those tough days is you come home and you got like mm -hmm. the kids that, that bring it out of you, right? Like it's a hundred percent. You say like your kids, like Jesse hasn't uh, resorted to uh, like forcing them to say, I yeah. love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a good, that's a good tip. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> Italian wife would even come close to saying that. Yeah. It's so it's awesome to look into their home. eyes and realize that they don't know and they don't care. They don't care yeah. that the, what about the bank? They don't no. care about interest rates. They don't, know it. they don't care about anything. They just care about like, you are the person who can set me up with a bicycle, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah. what Hudson does. He's like, I'll, I'll pay for it. I'm like, I'm, I'm, what? Where did you get that kind of money to pay for? Well, I got $500 in the bank. He is a, a great sidekick for you on social media. You yeah. are like, I, you put yourself out there more than any any person I know from a friend standpoint. Yeah, yeah. You put yourself out there. And when I see your son, it's like, you're not using him as a tool to sell houses. You're just like, this is what me and the boy are doing today. And he's like, these eggs yeah. are good. And like, I love that. I love that because yeah. your kids, the kids don't know yeah. anything else, but to be honest, I yeah. love it. Yeah. And it, it, they, everybody's trying to get me like start his own 
like YouTube channel and stuff. Like, yeah. What if he he wants to do? You know, he, he said, "Have you ever seen the movie Encanto? Are your kids still that? Oh, yeah. Your, your no, kids are I, older I, than yeah, that now, yeah, right? Where they that, don't no. get excited about new Disney movies? No, no, they're yeah. Well, everybody has a special gift, and one of the one of the people in the in the movie who has a gift, he pretends that his gift is acting, but it's not acting. It's that he can see visions. So Hudson's like, "I want a gift," and we're like, "Okay, what kind of gift?" He's like. Acting. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, you should be fine. That yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's hilarious. You're there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. So, uh, moving forward, we always like to to talk a little bit yes. about what people love about Niagara. You already touched on it. Yep. Uh, a generous community that gives back and like, uh, but like uh, you know, we we talk about. You know, date night in Niagara. Sure. What, what do you, what do, you do uh, when you get a chance to, to run away with your wife who spoils you with uh, I love you's from the kids? Yeah, that's awesome. That's like, uh, so we, we'll take, uh, you know, we'll take any restaurant in Niagara, whether it's it's Two Sisters or the Garrison House or Bricks and Barley or the Fire Hall, uh, the old Fire Hall or Sand Trap or... Niagara Sports Bar, Niagara's Finest Thai. I'm trying to think of every place that's, <laughs> that's, like that? that's, that's uh, White Oaks. Um, yeah. We uh, uh, we'll take any one of those, and whatever vibe you're looking for, and yeah. and uh, whatever you know, however the night's gonna go, if yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Um, then then you go you go there. Right now, as a company, we're doing takeout every Friday. Yeah. So yeah. so we've got. Uh, uh, Lakeview lunches on Friday. We did Barrelhead at Pillatory States today. Uh, we really try to because I know there's a lot of noise in the world right now, and people talking about uh, you know lockdowns and what's bad for companies, what's good for companies. Uh, our preference really is to to speak with our checkbook. So we're a company that would have spent on average fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year dining with customers. So we would mm-hmm. you know we bring in customers from all over the U.S. Uh, we bring in customers from Quebec. We bring in customers from uh, Prince Edward County. Uh, when they're here for a couple of days, that's something that was always part of our expense. And then, you know, for two years, essentially, that goes away. Uh, so our thought was, we are blessed with the greatest staff on earth. Let's choose a restaurant every week. Let's let's have them involved in in where we're going and what we're doing. And we order lunch for, for 23 people. And uh, That's amazing. Was, oh, uh, okay, we're good. Uh, so, so, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's what we're doing right now, but yeah, uh, my wife and I, I remember the first time I did a gig at White Oaks, they gave me, uh, they gave me a night at White Oaks with dinner and I really felt like that was the most celebrity I ever yeah. felt. I was like, I, you want to, you want some dessert? Cause it's included with the certificate <laughs> and then, and then stayed, Any uh, dessert uh, you stayed like. at the, uh, the fancy, <laughs> the fancy room in White Oaks. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, that's I'm going to ask you about the Pillatory Family Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> the Niagara Community Foundation, the Vincent Margaret Pillatory Fund. Love so it. The Niagara, Pil- the Niagara Community Foundation ap- approached us about sponsoring, uh, making a $100,000 commitment over five years. That was three years ago. Uh, my sisters and I decided that we would name it in honor of our parents because they've both been really great influences on our life um, for a bunch of reasons. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I do these comedy shows and I'll say it as many times and as loudly as I can, but without my older sister, Eileen, organizing the logistics and the seating and, and knowing what makes me nervous and not, uh, and my younger sister, Caroline, who is very funny in her own right, uh, basically going through my set list for, for every show, because I try to have at least 75% of jokes that I've never done before with every show. Uh, without those two, it's impossible. And, and, and they got that from my parents. They got that from when there's work to be done, do it and do it with an open heart and give your time freely. So uh, another long answer to a short question, but <laughs> no, we've committed $100,000. Shows have been tough to plan, uh, yeah. but we are going to do one this year, date and time to be announced uh, with, with the hopes of, uh, of, 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 of that but we've we've contributed as a family to that privately as well so so it's basically like it's a show yes and and where does the the money go for that one so it goes to the the Niagara community foundation that hundred thousand dollars uh the interest uh that it gains in perpetuity and those funds are are pretty uh carefully regulated so the minimum return that they give is three and a half percent a year and then if the returns are higher than that 
that money is split evenly between uh, the Terry Fox Foundation, the interest, and and uh, Red Roof Retreat. Uh, Steph and Mo Bjorgen, two of the most selfless people you'll ever meet that have started and 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 take care of the Red Roof Retreat here in Niagara, which is a, a camp uh, and activities uh, center for children with uh, that have have physical challenges. Okay. Very good. Yeah. yeah. And and so Stacy mentioned earlier that your your sister's actually funnier than you are, <laughs> which, uh, they, which which I find hard to believe. The, the, but it, uh, my they're both funny in their own. They can both do a good. So we all we can all like nothing makes us matter than a bad Scottish accent. Because <laughs> when you grew up with a Scottish mother, and yeah, then you watch some yeah. commercial where the actor was like the best Scottish accent they could find. <laughs> like I literally want to punch someone in the face. <laughs> so my sisters and I, they'll like. But they they're good at 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 making fun of of the accent and uh, and they're both like we'll joke with each other all the time about like um, like I'll joke about about them uh, coming to a show and I'm like listen if we're gonna raise a hundred thousand dollars and I'm going to skim ten thousand dollars off the top I need you guys there right like, <laughs> <laughs> well it's well because my dad's uh, Scottish as well so he came here when he was twenty eight. Uh, so his Scottish accent is still very thick too. So every time, and for one, because I I know your family, and I, not not ex- exactly personable with everybody, but like I know them because we bought the house and yeah. living beside Vince, and Vince coming over on his gator, and yeah. what are you guys doing? Here's some yeah. fruit, throwing fruit at us, asking Hudson to go for a ride, and just super super generous. But so it's so really cool to watch your sets because it's always about your family, always about the community as well. And although the jokes are different. Every, yeah. t- every time yeah. I've seen you, but I, I just love hearing the Scottish accent and relating it to my upbringing and then how I know Vince too. So it's, it was, so it's really cool how you're bang on about all of that, especially about the community too. It's, you've got your finger on the pulse with that one. I think Scottish people don't, they don't, they don't seem like, uh, like they're capable of doing a whole lot of harm, but like my, we were at my parents' <laughs> house the other day and my dad, he's, he's diabetic. He's always cold. So he has the door shut, the heat set at like 88 and the fire going. And my poor mom is like wearing a t-shirt. Oh my God, it's so hot in here. And my dad's yelling over the television that he has on 118 volume. He's like, I can't hear a thing. What are you guys saying over there? And my mom, I'm going to kill your father, son. I am going to kill him. And I'm like, mom, if you're going to kill him, use poison. Because like no one will actually suspect that you did it. If it's like, if it's low key, just see it. She's like, well, I'll, I'll honest to God, I'm going to punch him. And I, it, so this is, this is the vibe at my parents' place now. So yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Joe, I think that's a great time to end. And, um, Thank you so much. No, for this is on my the show. pleasure. That yeah. was amazing, and uh, we've we wanted to have you uh, on the show ever since yeah. you made fun of Evan at yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. At yeah. the yeah. Terry yeah. Fox. I considered coming up with a joke to make fun of you <laughs> somehow, but I was like, "This is too dangerous." No, you guys, <laughs> this guy's too funny. He's gonna uh, he's uh, gonna tear into me. I could edit the video after. You should have, <laughs> show like honestly after this in the in whatever comment section you can post a picture of the two of you that night. I was like, "Those are some well dressed, good looking people in the front row." Like that's <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, and then didn't uh, what's Oh my God! What's his name again? Mike Green. What's his? Uh, name? David Green. David oh, Green. Yeah. And he's like, he asked me to do my best Mike Myers impression. I'm like, what? <laughs> Calling me out. So the only thing I could do is was the fat. Bastard. That bastard's a great one. What are you talking about, Andrew? I heard it from the sidelines. Yeah. I like. I, I get psyched. It up was good. Yeah. There you go. Well, anyways, guys, thank you very much uh, for joining us. It's uh, a great first episode back of 2022. And Joe, thanks again. Thanks yeah, for having thanks me. For I do show. want to say one thing. Yeah, before yeah, please. We go. Of course. Um, Ravine Winery. Obviously, this is the wine that we we showcase today. Um, and the funny thing is, is this is the third time someone's brought Ravine wine on. That's right. And I will say this. This is really interesting. Uh, the wine is great, obviously. And uh, the comments are, you know, this wine's amazing. I love it for this reason. Uh, and then the scenery there is incredible, but what it always goes into is that Paul Harbor and their family are true pillars of the community. Hundred percent, and that's a big reason why they bring the wine. Uh, and this is the third time we've that's we've awesome. Yeah. And so I think it's really cool that you brought that wine. You picked that one. Um, and when two people say it, it's like, hey, coincidence. But three people, man. Might be, I know. Might that's be, fact. Might be, might be that's honest. That's fact. Right? Yeah. Right? And it's also the so, third time I've drank in that bottle. Yeah, really? So that's good. Yeah. Man. So if you're, you know what, I I, uh, I think it's uh, a big shout out to Ravine. Very cool reason for their wine being showcased three times on this show. 
And uh, yeah, if you get a chance to get out there, the scenery is amazing. And good the, people. And, and the good people, people are awesome. So yep. that's cool. Awesome. And thank really? you very much for Thanks, being on Thanks, kids. The show. Thanks really for having me. It. Yeah. Beautiful. All thank right. you. Awesome. That's a wrap.